here. Oh, by the way, I was just going to ask you this. What database does uh, NetSuite use? Oracle. Oh, Oracle. Always, it's always Oracle? Yeah. Okay. And because we don't uh, see, um, we don't have access, right, uh, to the database, so. Yes, uh, so if you're using any sort of a, a data, any ETL tool, or even through SQL Developer also, you can, uh, using JDBC connection, we can connect to the uh, NetSuite database. But again, you can just retrieve information, so you can do select, nothing else. Oh, you can do an ODBC connection to the database? Sorry? So you can do an ODBC connection to the database? Yes, but you can only uh, retrieve information. You can do only select, or you can't do insert, update, or anything. So, um... Can, can you walk us through maybe sometime later, uh, not the ODBC, but at least uh, the uh, how the database looks and uh, how do we, I mean, uh, what type of, is it, obviously it is table structure, right? Uh, yeah, so, yeah. So do you have any documentation um, of what tables are there in uh, distribution uh, manufacturing, uh, those areas? Uh, in terms of, yeah, so I will say, yes, I think I should have, uh, because I worked on such requirement once, um, where I build like certain reports uh, based on this data. So I believe I should have, but let me check and, uh, you know, uh, get back to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take the time. Our, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take the time. Um, yeah, before our morning session, I'll, I'll, I should have something. Sure, sure. And... Uh, if you have any type of uh, architecture, um, uh, how NetSuite is built, uh, you know, um, how do I say this? Um, so basically, uh, a NetSuite architecture diagram. Yeah, but is there something like that? Because you know, in all the ERPs, right? And uh, I don't know about Oracle EBS, but uh, SAP and uh, JD and all, you will have a solid uh, architecture diagram. You know. Uh, how the data flows between this. I have, I mean, different, different, uh, I have an, I have architecture diagrams where, you know, uh, NetSuite, if it's the entire uh, system architecture where NetSuite is there, other applications are there, how they integrate. But within NetSuite, uh, let me see, I, I should be able to get some. Sure, sure. This so NetSuite architecture diagram of... and, uh, how to connect uh, or how does this table structure and everything looks right? Correct, correct, correct. Because, okay. yeah, I mean, uh, if you can. Uh... Certainly, I will uh, do that. So, um, in terms of testing, right? So, uh, I will show you uh, one client script, which is. Uh, one more thing, you know, since you uh -huh. brought up the testing piece, right? You know, uh, our system, uh, our software implementer, right? Uh, uh, I don't know. It, it, they are a little light on um, testing side, uh, uh, you know, uh, how after, you know, we convert the data and uh, uh, what to be tested in each module, right? Uh, so do you have, by any chance, in your uh, past uh, implementations, uh, do you have... Uh, uh, a list of what has to be tested. I'm a very regulated industry, so we have a solid uh, uh, test plan. Okay, Correct. so every scenario within, uh, let's say, for sales order, right? Every scenario mm -hmm. where whether it might be a STOT transfer between uh, warehouses, transfer between uh, subsidiaries, as you mentioned, so. Uh, everything, you know, every order type, you know, there is a sales order type, uh, different types of order type, you know, quotes, uh, everything, you know, how you uh, do the testing and the flow. 
Uh, have you heard about uh, UPK? Oracle UPK? No. Uh, it's, it, it, you know, Oracle has been stored in um, UPK. So uh, we have that far, we go that far because we, it ha uh, my previous company was a uh, OEM manufacturers of uh, okay. uh, guide wires, uh, stents, and you name it, you know, uh, pacemakers. So mm -hmm. they manufacture for different companies like Medtronic, Boston Scientific, Johnson & Johnson, all these huge companies. So we have to go through those uh, stringent uh, uh, rules and, um, uh, you know, uh, what uh, they put forward uh, uh, with us. You know, this is what it has to look like. You know, uh, they have to approve it because we manufacture for them. So uh, I come from that background and I... I, uh, uh, you, we usually have a very solid test plan, you know, so do you, by any chance, do you have a list of, I don't need any scripts, but uh, uh, test scripts, but you know, maybe on a high level, this has to be tested uh, in each module. Maybe I'm asking too much, I guess, but you know, you don't need to answer me today, or maybe uh, we, we, we can talk later also. Let me check if I have something like that. Understood. Also, you can view the code also, what has been deployed. Yes, I mean, you can view the code uh... That is there. You can view all the scripts and everything. Um, but test plan wise, I believe. Uh, so what what is the activity which is happening right now? So like you are migrating data from one system to NetSuite. Correct. We have a homegrown uh, yeah. uh, system yeah. there. It's been okay. there for twenty years, and they are moving to NetSuite. NetSuite, uh, right? Um, so this yep. this entire data migration activity. It, it is. It is the okay. and. Uh, Eventually, you know, everyone will get uh, all the company-wide, uh, they'll get uh, uh, trained and, you know, uh, all that. Uh, and with the data, what we have, um, the master data, right now we uh, have master data in our sandbox. But um, we, when we do uh, some transactions, when we configure the system uh, properly, you know, that's we are configuring it right now as we speak, uh, but it will take some time, about a month or so, uh, to get things done. And at the same time, they would be doing some customizations and uh, integrations. Uh, we have uh, some solid integrations going uh, into the system. So that will all be done by um, by next month end. Uh, so after that, you know, our test, uh, uh, the, there are two, three different tests, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3. So, um, yeah, uh, if there is no, uh, don't, don't worry, you know, don't, uh, I mean, I, I might ask uh, someone uh, who is also familiar with the uh, NetSuite uh, here, but um, I uh, thought I'll just so The point is, you. yeah, no, no, the point is I have not, uh, you know, worked on the testing side. So I've done unit testing and all, but okay. I've worked on a scenario where there used to be a different testing team always. But I can I can definitely you know check some of my friends and colleagues who have been sure, there sure, in the sure. QA part sure. and then I can uh, give sure. back to you. Absolutely. And uh, so um, I'll say on this uh, let's say uh, on a sales order right on the sales order module here, can uh -huh. we see can we see the underlying code how they have written this code uh, for the sales order? No, no. We the only thing okay. we can see is the page XML if you want. Uh, oh, pages, uh, page XML? Like object, uh, yeah, X, in an XML structure, I told you, right? Where in the in the URL you put M percent XML equals to tree, it will show you the XML structure of the page or, or the entire yeah. object in an XML format, but you cannot see the source code. You cannot, okay, okay. So the source code, you cannot see it, okay. So do we know what, does, uh, what language uh, they used uh, to do this one? I can check. I'm I'm not sure right now. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Because if you see Oracle side uh, things, right? They mm -hmm. they do a lot uh, 
uh, on uh, Visual Studio. Um, mm -hmm. If you ask me, JD Edwards, JD Edwards was uh, basically built on with the uh, C++. So, yeah, I mean, um, so that's why you have uh, some of the programs. You can write uh, C++ business functions in uh, JD. So I always take uh, JD because, you know, I worked uh, a lot on JD side. Mm -hmm. So JD Edwards, I know it is. I think I think it is VB and uh, C plus plus, right? Initially, yeah. Initially, it was B VB. It's all Microsoft based, right? Uh, everyone uh, uses. Uh, 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 so initially, it was VB, but uh, later on, they did the uh, Visual C plus plus. Hmm. Okay. But then uh, in JD Edwards, right? Uh, uh, everything is event rules. So the source, you can see the source code. So if I have to modify the sales order screen, right? Um, it's called form in, uh, in JDE. So you can, you have that underlying uh, source code, you can modify it, you know, uh, but there are thousands and thousands of uh, nice. uh, lines <laughs> for a sales order. It's a- right. so Here also huge. you have, I mean, this is also called as form. You can customize it from UI. But yeah, unfortunately, we don't have access to the source code. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, in, in NetSuite also, the, the history is that NetSuite uh, came as a startup. Like it was a, it was a startup. Uh, they came as a standalone ERP. And I think in 2016 is when Oracle has acquired it. So from 2016, it has become Oracle's product now. Oh, uh -huh. right. So whenever Oracle buys something, right, the first thing they will try to do is they want to uh, kill that product. But uh, uh, and for, yeah, I mean, fortunately, it has not happened with NetSuite yet. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yeah, because, I, even, uh, even uh, when I started working on NetSuite, right, and then I uh, got this news that Oracle has acquired that, I was a little tense. I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> maybe two years or three years down the line, I might have to switch to another. Uh, you know, I might have to change my skills and should switch to something else, but. You know, luckily the market is going uh, really good for NetSuite and Oracle has not done, um, you know, general things what they do with uh, any acquisition. Be it so, JD Edwards, be it PeopleSoft, Siebel, right, right. they've done the same thing. They've done the same thing with everything. Yeah, but uh, NetSuite has been pretty, pretty good actually last uh, few years. Actually, Correct. you know, That's true. in my That's previous true. company, uh, we had uh, three different ERPs. You know, we had SAP, JD Edwards and NetSuite. So... Wow. Um, JD Edwards was, uh, uh, we had three versions. Uh, I mean, I, and uh, we were trying to hire a person uh, last year and we couldn't find a developer, uh, even uh, uh, working remotely also. A good developer, actually. We had resumes, but uh, could not uh, find a, a good uh, resume uh, to call and uh, finalize things. But, uh, you know, yeah, it is, uh, NetSuite has been uh, tremendously growing the last few years now. Uh, at least in US, I can tell you that. No, in, in the Indian market also, US, I mean, obviously Indian market is uh, pretty much uh, dependent on US market. So in, in, in Indian market as well, and I've seen some European companies also, you know, started implementing that suite. And so it is, it is going good. And uh, yeah, I mean, you see in my previous company, when... Um, the task was to grow the NetSuite practice and, and all the profiles and resumes I was getting, I don't know, they mentioned they have like six, seven years of experience in NetSuite and they don't understand basics as well. <laughs> so I, I also struggled, uh, you know, in the same hiring process. It's, it's yeah, I don't know. It's it's really tricky uh, to find the, find the right and you know, best fit. But yeah, it, it, it is um, challenging in the market right now. True. Okay, so um, coming back to the script testing, uh, this is again logged out.
So as part of this client script, what we're doing, we are on on a page in it. We are setting default value for uh, two fields, which is uh, named as sales rep hour and sales rep uh, number. So we are setting default values for these two fields. Can, can uh, you uh, uh, the very first uh, uh, right? Uh, so what does current record means? So current record, as I told you, right, there is one module called current record, which is only available for uh, client script. Oh, it is only available for client script. Okay. So, yes. so there is record and current record also. Okay. So there is a record which is available for all scripts and current record module is only available for uh, client script. So current mm -hmm. record... Uh, what it does, it gives you access to the record which is currently active in a client session. So let's say if I'm working on uh, on this sales order record from mm -hmm. using, from on this browser, so the current record module will give us access to this uh, entire record because that is the one which is active in the client session. Mm. Okay, sure. So this is designed specifically for client scripts. Uh, all the APIs, whatever is there in that module are only for client scripts. It is not used uh, in any other script type. Okay, okay. And just go back to the uh, script. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Now, in the first function, which is the page init function, so as I, uh, you know, told you yesterday also, page init function uh, primarily utilized to default some field values or uh, you know change some display types for a particular field or, or things like that, right? So what we are doing here, we have on a sales order level, we have two fields. One is this sales rep number, and then you have sales rep R. Mm -hmm. We are setting default values for these two fields. Sure. Okay. So now if you see in the script, we are set, we got this current, using current record, we got the current record snapshot. And what we do, we are doing this current record dot set value for uh, field ID. So you, you, I told you, right, uh, that we use internal uh, or other field ID for any script. We don't use the label. So cust body 132 is the field ID for this particular okay. field. Sure. Right. So we are using, we are setting value for cust body 132 and the value is 1001. Similarly, cust body 133, that is another field ID and we're setting the value as zero. Okay. That is the default value. So as soon as you open a sales order, you will see these two field values set as 1001 okay. and 10. Sure. Sure. Okay. Now on save record, On save record, what we are doing, we are just displaying these two field values and then allowing save. So when I say uh, displaying, we are putting it an alert, which which will come as a pop up where we're putting an alert by saying yep. value for sales rep number is this and sales rep by ours is this and we just then we return true. So we are actually not validating anything right now. In this example, we are just showing uh, the values as a pop-up, and then oh, save, yeah, yeah. save will happen, right? I, okay, I don't see the value here, so we are not setting. So we are just getting the value from the field one. Yeah. Okay. So you have okay. this. Uh, we are getting the field value for cust body one thirty two and one thirty three, and then we okay. are showing it in a pop-up. Sure, sure, perfect. Okay, and then last thing is our, our validate validate field function. In validate field function, what we are doing, we are uh, validating if uh, for cusp body 132, which is sales rep hours, if by any okay. chance, if the uh, sorry, sales rep number, if the number is any any chance less than 1001, then we'll show an alert and return false. Mm. Okay. Okay. Return. Okay. okay. But, yeah, I'm just saying sales rep should at least be 1001 and then uh, return false. So if it if is less than. One zero zero one. If it is good, if, if it is greater than one zero zero one, there is no. That's okay. For, for That's okay. okay. Yeah. It just that is allowed. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. 
now on field change what we are doing we uh, we are validating if there is any value change on sales rep uh, sales rep now number which is cust body 132 then we are setting the uh, sales rep r as 100 okay okay so very very small activity yeah yeah it's an easy one yep yeah so let Let's quickly uh, see this. And uh, so, as soon as I loaded the sales order, uh, sales order, you see the value is defaulted to one zero zero one here, and sales sure. rep R is zero. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Now let's see. I make this. I think there is some other script which is also deployed. I'm thinking. Okay. with me <clears throat> now this is another uh, i mean another thing you going to customization script and scripted record okay uh, you can see the list of script is deployed yeah, or yeah. any any record sure sure it gives you a list it, of it, user events like
No, no, can, no, no, no. We can finish it in like another five minutes. So then you can okay. continue. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so... Okay. So what we have here is uh, we right now have three functions, which is page init, save record, and field change. Right. So what happens is, as soon as this page is initialized, you will see the default values coming as sales rep number one zero zero one and the sales rep as zero. Right. Okay. This is what yep. we have written in the script. So you yes, can sir. see the default values yep. coming here. Sure. Sure. And then. In field change, what we are doing, if we change value for this field, then your sales rep R will become 100. That is the logic we had put, right? So let's say if I make it as 1002 and tab out, you'll see the sales rep R is 100. Sure, sure. Okay. Now, third thing is on the save record. Save record, I told you, we are just saving these records and populating the, so we will now save. But before that, we'll show it and show it as a pop up like what are the values for these two fields. So I click on save. And you see this pop-up. Value for oh, sales rep number is 1002 and sales rep R is 100. Yeah. And if I click OK, it will go to for shave. But right now, we have not entered all the mandatory feed values. So it is, it is right, standard right. validation is going on. Sure, sure, sure. So this is like a very uh, small example of uh, you yeah. know, what can be done using a client script. Uh, now, uh, the... Uh, the assignment information which I shared with you, you can you know you can work on that. So it will give you yeah, a you know, hands-on experience for both of them, yeah. like client and user event both. Yeah, yeah. You'll have a hands-on sure. experience. And uh, once we talk about this client script, linking client script to the suite late, right? Mm -hmm. That is I mean that is our uh, topic after we finish the scripting, basic scripting. Sure. Then we'll sure, sure. we'll have a complex client script and uh, suite lit problems. Sure, sure. Definitely. Okay. Definitely.